Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. Did you get that PS5 you wanted? You did? Well, it's about time. I made that joke like two years ago. No, don't go looking for that video, it's terrible, don't watch it! Well, it just so happens, I also finally got a PS5. And to celebrate that fact, and definitely not just for tax purposes, I figured we could go back to the game that started it all. No, not Kingsfield, that game scares me. Today, we're gonna find out. Can you beat Demon's Souls with only crossbows? So while I make a terrible joke on screen, let's talk about Demon's Souls. The original version of the game came out in 2009, two years before Dark Souls. And in typical FromSoft fashion, this game is essentially the root of a lot of cool moments from the Dark Souls series. Something I'm sure anyone who's familiar with the series will notice immediately. This game is also the most imbalanced mess of the entire series. With things like magic just outright demolishing everything in its path. You thought magic was easy mode in Dark Souls? Oh, you sweet summer child, you have no idea. But unfortunately for us, there won't be any of that nonsense today. At least, not initially. But I'm sure there's plenty of bad math that we can take full advantage of elsewhere in the game. And with our character fully made, it's time to enter the world of Boletaria. For those unfamiliar with the story, I'll give you the spark notes. A colorless fog has been rolling across the land, cutting off entire civilizations from the rest of the world. Inside the fog are powerful demons, who grow stronger with every human soul they take. Naturally, humanity at large realized they could reverse the process and become powerful themselves if they took a demon soul, which led entire nations to attack the demons in return. It did not go well. And that's where we come in, at the end of all things. Humanity is losing the war, and we've been sent out into the fog seeking help, fortune, or both. Considering our character isn't able to use anything except a crossbow, these are desperate times indeed. Except it appears someone forgot to give me a crossbow. I have 20 bolts for some reason, but not the weapon itself. So that's cool. Well, I guess we better find ourselves a crossbow then. I disrobe from the waist up to give myself the fastest movement and dodge speed possible, run around the tutorial map looting all the bodies for healing items, and in general just get used to the kind of playstyle this build is going to require. Running away and screaming past anything and everything, putting that military training to good use. Eventually, I reach the tutorial boss, the Vanguard Demon. Wow, someone got a glow up since 2009. I'd just like to give a quick round of applause to Bluepoint for all the hard work they put into modern- Well, there's nothing we can do about this boss today. Might as well sit down and take our lumps. A fine start. But it wouldn't be a Souls game if they let us off the hook that easily. Our suffering has only just begun. Get pumped. So, with our soul trapped for eternity in the Nexus, it's time to get to work. Unlike Dark Souls, Demon's Souls has very specific levels split into five different worlds. Each world has three or four individual levels, and it's up to us to clear each one. At the moment, we can only access 1-1. As good a place to start as any. Time to get our miles in. I make sure to grab all the goodies I can get my grubby little hands on, ranging from healing herbs, which are this game's version of Estus, to loose souls, which work exactly the same as Dark Souls. Thankfully, it's really not that hard to outmaneuver the enemies in this game, so I'm able to run past everything in the beginning of the level with ease. And for the few times I can't, rolling into enemies actually nudges them out of the way. So we've got that going for us. Hey look, another Dark Souls repeat. Hi Boulder! Still as effective as ever, I see. Man, sure am glad that Demon Souls cuts your health bar in half when you're not in human form. It makes the game so much more fun. That's sarcasm, by the way. That is one thing I appreciate about the Soul series as a whole. Each game, you can see them slowly figuring out what mechanics work and fine-tuning it as it goes, which is probably why so many people swear by Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring. They're definitely the most polished of the five. In any case, after unlocking the shortcut to the top of the castle walls, I get one of the best rings in the game for anyone who plays like I do. The Kling Ring, which, when worn, boosts your health to 75% of your human form rather than 50. That's better, much better, let's go. And since we're here, we might as well grab another ring that'll help with all the running and screaming we'll be doing. The Thief Ring, which reduces the aggro range of enemies. Very useful. But while our ability to dodge and ignore enemies is taken care of, we still don't have a way to fight back. Luckily for us though, there are two places you can get the first crossbow of the run. You can buy it from the Dregling Merchant here for 2,000 souls, or you can roll off this ledge here and pick it up for free, which is what I did. Though I didn't record it for some reason. Holiday brain, I guess. My bad. In any case, with a crossbow now officially in our pockets, we just need a way to get more bolts. And would you looky at what we have here. Free souls, just ripe for the taking. It's not a whole lot, only about 112 per run, but the enemies sometimes drop health items as well, so it's worth the trip. We also have our favorite Dark Souls 1 grinding spot available to us as well. Pop a dragon and the roughly 300 souls he provides. Combine that with some risky item grabbing around the dragon's roost, and we've got more than enough souls to stock up on ammunition. And after sending all the unnecessary items I have in my bag back to the Nexus, God, what a great quality of life change. 
and buying as many wooden bolts as I can at the low, low price of 10 souls each, it's time to face the first boss of the run, Phalanx. This boss is every Demon Souls challenge runner's nightmare, mostly because it doesn't play nice with the beginning of any run. The boss itself consists of dozens of shielded minions, all protecting the gooey center mass hiding beneath. Alright, let's see what we're working with here. Well, I mean, that's not terrible damage, but holy god in heaven that reload time. It takes two bolts and proper positioning to kill the minions, and even then it feels like I'm taking hits every time I fire my crossbow. This is awful. In an effort to minimize damage, I did the unthinkable and put my armor back on, then tried using the crossbow two-handed. It may just be copious amounts of cope talking here, but I think the reload speed is faster? Maybe? Nah, who knows. In any case, this is the fight in a nutshell. Run around the boss trying to lure out the minions, try to find a safe moment to kill said minions without taking any damage, repeat ad nauseum. While not overly challenging, I will say one thing about this fight. It taught me a lot about my weapon of choice. For one thing, the free aim on this thing is atrocious. I have no idea where I'm actually aiming, as it doesn't seem to be based on where I'm pointing the camera. It's usable up close, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So yeah, that's going to take some time to figure out. The other thing I've learned is that there really isn't that much to this weapon. It only has one attack, no special moves whatsoever. It also has zero scaling, so no amount of leveling up is going to improve the damage. At least this boss gave me upgrade materials. That'll help later. Well, it took over 10 minutes and over 100 bolts, but I've finally removed all the minions. It's just you and me now, big guy. And with the final round of bolts to the... uh... face? Phalanx melts into nothing, giving me my first demon soul and returning my humanity. Oh hey, more upgrade materials. Don't mind if I do. Back to the Nexus, where I need to do two things immediately before I forget. The first thing I need to do is throw myself off the nearest staircase. What do you mean, why? This is the backlogs, so you should know better than ask questions at this point. And the second thing we need to do is upgrade our... Wait a minute. Oh. Oh no. Oh no! So, fun fact, did you know you can't upgrade crossbows in Demon Souls? Yeah, me either! The only way to increase the crossbow damage is to get better bolts. Thankfully, the blacksmith on the Nexus sells the next version for 30 souls each. It's a bit pricey. Three times the cost for an extra 10 damage each shot. Insert oof sound effect here. Well, should have known this would be another healthy boy run. All my souls will be going into health, stamina, and ammunition from here on out. Guess we don't need to worry about upgrade materials, though. That's something, at least. But with 1-1 cleared, the rest of the worlds are now open. Which means we can start crafting our build. First things first, let's make a stop in 3-1. The Prison of Hope. This place is a maze, with several keys to collect and lots and lots of mind flayers to hug. But, despite the mental anguish, there's actually some really good items lying around. We've got a black leather set, which will absolutely come in handy. And, after several minutes of running in circles, the prize I was searching for. The heavy crossbow. This crossbow is essentially the one and only upgrade we're going to get weapon-wise. 15 extra damage. My excitement knows no bounds. For those of you screaming at your screen right now, yes, I know, there's a third crossbow in the game. The gargoyle crossbow, which does a whopping 25 damage less than the one I have. There is an argument to be made about using it. It's lighter, has longer range, it does magic and physical damage, and gods above it has stat scaling. But someone's already done the math for us. And if we somehow grinded out the three enemies in this game that drop it, with a crossbow no less, and then proceeded to max out our magic to 99, it would do a grand total of 40 physical and 40 magic damage. So unless we're completely stuck and have no other choice, I think I'm good. Besides, there's better ways to increase our damage than grinding out a slightly better crossbow. Okay, now the game's just making fun of me. After dodging my way past this game's version of the Avalon, I prove once again that the Avalon is actually a trash tier weapon, and disable it for good. After that, it's just a quick jaunt down the road it was protecting, and we've got one of the most important rings of the run. The Clever Rat Ring. This ring is essentially the Demon Souls version of the Red Tear Stone Ring. When your health is below 30%, the player's damage is increased by 50%. Who needs upgrades, am I right? I head upstairs to deal with the boss's most avid supporter. Dude, she doesn't even know you exist. You need to calm down with those tier 3 subs, my man. Then head to the boss proper. The false idol. Right, let's see what we're working with this time. 62 damage, huh? Okay, I can manage that. This fight is simple enough. Just find the idol that shoots the biggest magic blast your way, then pump three bolts into her. Rinse and repeat. You can also tell which is the proper idol by watching her subscribers. They only worship the real one. It takes a bit to get the job done, but after a few minutes of dodging behind pillars, We've done it. False idol down, and another demon soul collected. Now we just need to... Wait, wait, what is that? Cheese! Oh god, wait, stop, I can't do this bit anymore, I'm starting to get lactose intolerant from all the dairy. <laughs> oh god, my old man bones. Uh, I'm getting too old for this. In any case, I head back to the Nexus, level up my vitality a bit in an attempt to get some of my youth back, 
spend the rest of my souls to restock on bolts, then throw myself off the staircase again to get back into soul form. You know, considering we're going to be doing this a lot, I should probably explain why. Nah. This is YouTube. No one cares about behind the scenes strategies. Okay, okay, message received. I'll explain, shush. In Demon's Souls, there's this thing called World Tendency. You've got pure white, pure black, and several stages in between. At pure white tendency, the enemies have less health, do less damage, and have less defense, but drop less souls and items. In pure black tendency, enemies have more health, attack, and defense, but drop more loot and more souls. Other things happen too, like specific enemies and NPCs appearing, or new areas of each level unlocking, which is mostly unimportant for this run, aside from one item that we'll be getting later. Killing bosses pushes the world into white tendency, while dying in human form pushes the world into the black. So, in order to unlock an important item and simultaneously make the game slightly easier for ourselves, I've been throwing myself to my death in the Nexus to guarantee that we never die in human form, and thus we can reach pure white world tendency in every world by simply beating the bosses like we normally would. There, are you happy now? What do you mean, no? Overly complicated mechanics aside, let's get back to the things that everyone can understand. By rolling over this here ledge, I can skip most of 4-1 and collect the Regenerator's Ring, which lets me regenerate health at a rapid rate. Then, with a little more running and screaming, I dodge past the Dual Blade Tonys to grab the Adjudicator's Shield, which also heals me at a rapid rate. And with these two items nabbed, we can push ahead to the boss, the Adjudicator. Oh hey, we were just talking about you. As you can see, the regen effects in Demon Souls are no joke. We've got 20-something vitality, and our health is still noticeably increasing each second. Combine this with the fact that we can absolutely cheese this boss like no other, and you've got one of the easiest boss fights in the game. No dodging machetes or wailing on gory wounds for me, thank you. I'll take my Demon Soul to go. A few more levels into vitality, another restock of ammunition, and another leap of faith off the roof of the Nexus. All in a day's work. But with all of that taken care of, we're moving on to 4-2 because there's someone here who I very much want to meet. Let's see, he's supposed to be around here somewhere. <clears throat> well, at least my old man bones are powder now. That's cool, I guess. Down here in the pit, we have an invader to deal with, and also an item that's just out of our reach. Nothing we can do about the item at the moment, but clearing the invader sounds doable. Well, it looks like he has two modes. He's either lore walking at me and just taking my bolts on the chin, or he's sprinting towards me and dodging all of my attacks. He bounces back and forth between the two, so as long as I play keep away until he goes back into the lore walk mode, he's an easy kill. And once that's over with, we can go give Patches a piece of our mind. You know, I'm not really sure how I feel at the moment. I can't tell if those facial animations are amazing or awful. Probably a mixture of the two. In any case, after talking with Patches, he relocates back to the Nexus, where he now sells the next upgrade of crossbow bolts. Heavy bolts. 40 souls each, but an increase of 15 damage. Getting stronger all the time. Let's mix things up a bit and head to world 2-1. We're at the point where getting souls for ammunition and more health should be our main focus, so it's in our best interest to clear out a few of the easier bosses. The boss of 2-1, the Armor Spider, is super simple if you know what to do. There used to be a hiding spot you could tuck away in, but Blue Point patched it out. However, I've discovered a new one. Funnily enough, it's right in front of the boss. If you stand just out of range of its melee attacks, you can just pump round after round into the boss while it attempts to melee attack you. The only time you ever need to stop is when it's doing its flaming oil attack, but simply run back to the end of the tunnel and you'll be fine. After that, you just need to dodge the incoming webs and fireballs to get back into position, then go back to peppering it with bolts. And there you go. On to the next one. Back to world one. Nothing really to see here. Just let the dragon do most of the work and run past anything that isn't burnt to a crisp. Simple enough. And with that done, it's time for the iron golem. Uh, I, I mean the tower knight. What's this? A bunch of minion enemies spitting damage from above the arena? Now where have I seen this before? I clear out all of the inferior crossbows around the map, then wiggle my way in between the Tower Knight's legs to throw down the pain. Uh oh. <laughs> oh right, I'm a ranged build. I don't have to shoot his ankles. Well, that's a bit better. Between the Tower Knight's slow attack speed and the fact that I can hit him from pretty much anywhere, this fight won't take long. In fact, it's actually easier than I anticipated. There's no difference in damage between shooting the Knight's head or its body, which means you don't have to wait for any particular animations. Just get behind him and shoot him in the back over and over again. Because that's what heroes do. Another first try. Who would have thought that a weapon that has zero upgrades or stat scaling could take down bosses so easily? In all honesty, the hardest part of this game so far has been getting to the bosses. The run between bosses and Demon Souls is brutal in comparison to the other games. No intermediate bonfires for you, you've got to run through the entire level. Every single time. Some levels have shortcuts, but not all of them which means it's another five minutes of running and dodging every time we die. So with that in mind, let's first try the old hero, yeah? 
The old hero is blind, so he can't lock onto us unless we're making noise. A fact that I am more than happy to exploit. Wow, okay, that's a bit more of a damage drop off than I was expecting. Might as well make this fight completely tilted in our favor. I throw on the thief ring to make it even harder for the old hero to find us, then just plink him down from afar. It's very ammunition intensive and takes forever, but you can't deny the results. First try old hero, good enough for me. But with the old hero defeated, we finally reached the first archdemon of the run, the Storm King. God, I love this boss so much. This thing is Lovecraftian as hell. Combine that with the new graphics and the new soundtrack and sound effects, and this boss fight is my absolute favorite moment of anything FromSoft has made. I make my way to the dilapidated house in the middle of the arena, then use its relative safety to take cover from all the ranged attacks heading my way while simultaneously bringing down as many of the minions as I can. So long as you catch them before they can fully charge their attacks, there's no issue with this part of the fight. However, once we've killed enough of its children, the Storm King itself notices us. And if this moment doesn't drop your jaw, nothing will. Headphone users rejoice, this is some of the best sound design I've ever heard in gaming. If that combination of visual and sound doesn't make you shiver, I don't know how to reach you. I mean, look at the size of this thing, and the sounds it makes? Perfection. Couldn't get more atmospheric if it tried. As far as the boss's challenge goes, there's nothing to it. Just remove the minions, hide in the house to dodge the incoming range attacks, and empty as many bolts as you can into it each time it passes over you. And with that, that's World 4 entirely cleared and our first Archdemon soul collected. Hell of a good start. I pump my newly gotten souls into endurance so I can start to wear some heavier armor, restock on ammunition, then head back to World 4-2. Why? Because after killing all three bosses, the world is now in pure white tendency. And because of that, the item on top of this stalagmite has fallen within reach. Behold, the magic sword Makoto. Obviously we can't actually use the thing, but we can use its special effect. By simply holding the sword, our health will begin to deteriorate. Why does that help us, you ask? Oh, you'll see. And what better way to show you than the boss of 2-2, the Flame Lurker. I've always hated this boss. He moves too fast, hits too hard, and is overall just a complete pain to fight unless you've got the right build. And judging by that damage, the right build probably doesn't involve a crossbow. Yeah, no, this isn't gonna work. Time to use the Makoto. By putting on the Clever Rat's ring and holding onto the Makoto, we now have the easiest method of setting up for the Demon Souls version of Hyper Mode. Simply let your health tick down to 30%, activate the Clever Rat ring, and watch as your damage goes from 32 to 88. Uh, that's not 50% more damage. I mean, I'm not complaining, I'm just confused. My only guess is that the game is multiplying not only the crossbow's damage by 50%, but also the individual bolt's damage as well. Works for me. What doesn't work for me is how terrible the crossbow's aim is. Unless the flame lurker is standing absolutely still, this stupid thing can't seem to hit it. Combine that with the fact that parts of the floor are lava and set you on fire, and the fact that you only get two hits before death, and we're in for a bad time. By the way, that two hit rule only applies if the Flame Lurker hits you with his weakest attacks. Every other attack of his is a one shot, so that's fun. You know how everyone has that one boss in every Dark Souls game that just gives them an unreasonable amount of trouble? This is mine. I must have died here dozens of times. The boss is just too jumpy and weird for me to time my shots right. Combine that with an exhausting run back to the boss that inevitably keeps ending in me dying from a single attack, and yeah, I have regrets. Yeah, no, that's enough of that. Let's do something else. I know, let's go to Blight Town. That sounds much better. Imagine, if you will, Blight Town without shortcuts. Then imagine there's two entire levels of it. Then imagine that everything around you does massive damage and loves to trap you between two groups of enemies. You know what I hate the most? My favorite builds are Paladin builds, and the only way to get a halfway decent holy build going in Demon Souls is to clear this world with a fine toothed comb. Thanks, Demon Souls. Thankfully, we don't need to do that this go around, but I did pick up a Blessed Mace plus one which has more health regeneration effects. Combined with my other three health regen items, and healing herbs are no longer a necessity outside of emergencies. In any case, after realizing there was no way to sprint my way through the level, I plinked my way through 5-1, and after having used far more bolts than I'd like, we arrived at the boss, the Leechmonger. No idea why it's called that. Must be a high school nickname or something. So good news, bad news. The good news is that we can more or less cheese the Leechmonger from above. The bad news is that it can fight back, and regenerates its health at a pretty rapid rate. Guess it's time for hyper mode. 
The damage is fantastic, but we have to play it safe. One hit from those counterattacks, and we're toast. The damage we're doing isn't enough to fully counteract the health regen the Leechmonger has, but thankfully it can't just regenerate health forever, and has to take a break every now and again. And after keeping up the pressure and getting a little greedier than I should have, it's over. Leechmonger down, one more level of Blight Town to go. If you can believe it, this level is somehow worse than the first. Thank you, Demon Souls! Thankfully, years of playing through the original version of the game has taught me a number of tips and tricks, and this level is no different. Rather than trying to fight your way through all the enemies in muck, just hug the right wall of the level. No, really, that's it. The game puts all sorts of difficult enemies on the main path, assuming you'll avoid walking through the poison at all costs. But with all the regeneration items we've got, the poison swamp is actually preferable. Combine that with the thief ring, and we've got an easy walk to the boss fog. Which means it's time for the dirty colossus. This fight sucks. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I don't remember it ever being this hard. Might just be the fact that we're using a crossbow. This boss is definitely easier to fight if you're using melee. Getting hit with its range attacks is a recipe for disaster, since you get covered in biting flies that can only be removed by either waiting it out or throwing yourself into some fire around the arena. Or we can just not get hit. Yeah, let's do that. Oh uh, yeah, I remember why I hate this boss now. You can bait and predict the flies it shoots out of its arm, but this jack skeleton motherfucker here just randomly shoots flies at you with zero predictability. I guess even Bluepoint didn't know what to do with it. There's not an animation or anything. In any case, it took a bit to figure out, but eventually I developed what could loosely be called a strategy. Essentially, through the tried and true method of trial and error, I eventually figured out how long you have between attacks before it fires again. It feels random because it's on a different timer than the Colossus's other attacks, but it's the same every time. It took forever, since I wasn't willing to risk it for the biscuit by going into hyper mode, but after keeping a steady count in my head for upwards of 10 minutes, the Dirty Colossus finally crumples. Which means there's only one more boss in this world left to go. Maiden Astraea and her loyal servant Garl Vinland. My first attempt, I decided I'd be clever and race to the bottom to see if I could just kill Astraea before Vinland got down there. The game predicted me on that one though. Between Garl flattening me like a pancake, and the Toxic Swamp giving me not only the plague, but also taking away my ability to roll, I think we're going to need a different strategy here. I took a quick break to explore World 3-2, loosening up the chains that kept the brain of Mensis hanging, and sent it plummeting back to the cold hard earth. And I have regrets. After that, I gave the boss of the level a try. The Man-Eater. Once again, it looks like our complete lack of damage is going to be a problem. This fight has always been, how do you say, wonky. I'm not sure why they thought designing a boss around its ability to fly was a good idea, when they clearly struggle with creating an AI that could handle it. But either way, it's safe to say that this fight ain't happening. My damage is too low, and fighting two janky bosses at the same time is completely out of the question. Even with the clever rat ring, I'm probably out of my depths. The man eater's damage is just too high, and getting one shot is not my idea of a good time. So with that in mind, it's time for an upgrade. Back in 3-1, there's a noblewoman who sells the final upgrade of bolts. They cost 100 souls each, but do 80 damage. Not exactly an even trade, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Unfortunately, an extra 15 damage isn't exactly going to be enough to push us through the last half of the game. There's one more method of increasing our damage that I know, and I mean really increasing our damage. But wouldn't you know it, it's locked behind the Flame Lurker. And despite having better health, defense, and damage now, this fight hasn't gotten any easier. So, rather than trying to force it with the clever rat ring, I do what I do best. I weaponize my patience. Dozens of bolts. Several healing herbs. Constant regeneration. It's an ugly fight, and not one that I'm proud of, but as per usual, it always seems impossible until it is done. And after 10 minutes of imperfect dodges and over 100 of the most expensive bolts in the game, the Flame Lurker finally goes down, and the run can continue. But first, a detour. I take a moment to talk to the blacksmith and begin upgrading a short sword that I've got in my inventory. I don't have enough upgrade materials to get it past plus three, so I head back to 2-2 to grind out crystal lizards, heading to the nest for maximum profits. The crossbow isn't great at killing lizards, but it gets the job done. And after a few rounds of mowing down helpless reptiles, I finally got enough large hardstone shards. I buy the last few hardstone shards I need from the NPC hiding in 2-2, then do even more crystal lizard grinding to get a few hardstone chunks, which lets me get my short sword to plus eight, and after giving the flame lurker's soul to the blacksmith in 2-1, I transmute my short sword into the Morian blade. Why? Because this sword acts like a second red tearstone ring. And yes, it stacks with the clever rat ring. But before we can see what that looks like, let's see if we can't get rid of the last boss in World 2, yeah? The Dragon God is a puzzle boss, though I would definitely use the term puzzle loosely in this case. You're supposed to hide behind pillars while also trying to break through rubble that gets in your way, 
but there's a problem. From what I can tell, crossbow bolts don't seem to do any damage to the rubble, and even after doing vigorous aerobics to bring myself down into super hyper mode range, we get zero movement. Damn, I really thought that would work. Alright, new plan. Make the dragon god do it for me. He's got big old meaty fists, surely he's strong enough to break the rubble. Well, after multiple attempts and minutes of slowly regenerating my health over and over again, it looks like this isn't going to work either. The Dragon God can break the first rubble barrier, but it's not looking like he's able to break the second. I had just decided that I would have to break the pillars with my fists when Demon Souls decided to break itself. I'm not sure how or why, but the Dragon God threw my character out of bounds and down onto the lower level. I don't know what to do here. The Dragon God can't see me because his AI is looking for me on the level above, but I can't go back to the ballista that I need to shoot either. I tried to shoot the Dragon God's chin, but that doesn't seem to have a hitbox unless he's in phase 3. So that's out too. In the end, I decided Demon Souls was trying to tell me that it was time to move on with the run. I punched my way through the remaining stone barriers, made double certain that there was no way for me to kill the Dragon God without using giant ballistas, then proceeded to clear the level like normal. Or rather, it would have been like normal, but the cutscenes are acting like I've shot both ballistas already. Meanwhile, I still can't get to the first ballista since the Dragon God never actually cleared the rubble in a cutscene which means the Dragon God isn't actually pinned down like it's supposed to be, and his head is free to roam about the cavern. Hitting the Dragon God's chin momentarily brings it back to the correct position, but afterward it just glitches out and goes wonky again. At least we can still hit the boss, I guess. This game's dumb. In any case, it's time to see what Super Hyper Mode can do. Whoa, Nelly, now that's the kind of damage I can work with. It's not perfect. This boss is just as janky as the Dragon God was, if not more so and my crossbow's aim has not improved. But just before the second man-eater arrived on the scene, I was able to plink down the first, which meant that the second man-eater was easy pickings. Whew, thank god that only took one attempt once I got into super hyper mode. It would have sucked if I had died and then spent hours upon hours trying to get that same amount of luck again. Wait, wait, what are you doing? No, don't look at that. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Carl, cut the camera. After an unfathomable amount of pain and suffering that you'll never get to see, I finally arrived at the last boss of World 3. No, not him. The yellow fabric. Yeah, that's right, the Archdemon is a piece of cloth. What'd we say about asking questions? As far as the fight itself is concerned, there's not a whole lot to it. It's just half light from Dark Souls 3, but half as hard. Quarter light, if you will. Just wait for the old monk's AI to forget how to breathe, then shoot him in the face. He also really hates chairs, so if you can lure him into one of those, it'll give you an opening to shoot him as well. He does occasionally summon magical orbs to home in on your location, but you can just wait them out before going back on the offensive. Honestly, definitely one of the easier bosses we've faced thus far. World 3 cleared. And with that done, it's time to start cleaning up shop. With Super Hyper Mode now part of my arsenal, I now have enough damage to get rid of Garl Vinland. Just lure out an attack, then fire at will. Easy enough, since he won't ever leave his choke point. And, since Astrea would rather die than talk to me, that's the last boss of World 5 defeated. Which means we only have one more world left. World 1. There's not much to see here. Once we've entered Super Hyper Mode, Nothing can stand in my way. Even the hardest enemies in the level go down in two hits. You can tell they're the best because they have mohawks on their helmets. So, after plinking my way through the level, we've arrived at the third to last boss. Artorius of the Abit- Wait, no, that's not right. What's this guy's name? Really? That's what we're gonna go with? I mean, come on, his real name is Metis, and he's known as the King's Sword. You're telling me Bluepoint changed the name of Sticky White Stuff to Sticky White Slime, but couldn't be bothered to change this boss's name to Metis the King's Sword? I mean, yeah, Sticky White Slime isn't much better, but tangents aside, this boss isn't too bad. More of a learning curve than anything else. The damage I'm doing is perfectly acceptable. I just need to learn the boss's attacks a bit better so I can dodge them properly. Which I do. But, because this is a crossbow run, I then need to learn which animations are safe to counterattack with, and which ones will result in a swift sword to the face. Turns out, the penetrator has a little spin move that he does from time to time, and it's long enough that you can safely get an attack in, so long as you're far enough away. It takes some patience, and you have to keep your wits about you so that you can roll through his attacks, but wait for the right moment, and you can get your hits in with zero risk of getting slapped while you're reloading. And with a final bit of greed at the end of the fight, it's over. The penetrator bites the dust, and we're on to the final level of the game. I successfully sprint my way past a dragon, avoid an awkward elevator ride with Ostrava, then sit in silence while I wait for one of the longest elevator rides in video game history. Eh, at least the music's nice. And at the top of it all, we meet the man behind our suffering, Old King Alant. Let's do this. Much like the boss before him, this fight is all about timing. Avoid the attacks as they come whistling towards you, and take full advantage of his plunging attack animation whenever possible. He'll sometimes try to do it multiple times in a row, so you can get some pretty hefty damage in if you're lucky. Just make sure you watch out for wonky hitboxes. 
because King Alant's got several. It took several elevator rides, but eventually I started to get the rhythm of the fight down. It's not terrible, it's just a matter of knowing when to dodge and avoiding the urge to panic. And now that we're taking advantage of his charge attacks in super hyper mode, the damage is starting to rack up quickly. Just resist the urge to fire unless he begins to charge up his AoE blast, and the end will follow in due time. Or you can be me and get greedy in the last second of the fight. Either way works, but with that last bolt, we've done it. Every boss in the game defeated with a crossbow. All that's left is the end of all things. With the seal in the nexus shattered, the way is now open. And with one final leap of faith, we head to the end. To the source of the fog. The eater of worlds. The old one. I enter its gaping maw, ready for nothing, pushing through the branches that clog its innards, deeper towards the light. Inside, the true King Alant lurches towards me, mumbling the philosophies of an infinite being who has been alive for too many eons. I respond with a philosophy of my own, one that's metal has been tested against a mounting pile of dead horrors, a philosophy that proves true once more. And with that, we've done it. The Maiden in Black will do her part to lull the Old One back to slumber, ending the fog and the creation of further demons. And our soul, which has been trapped in the Nexus up to this point, is finally free. And so, we're left with one final question. How, uh, how do, how do we get home? And there you go. Demon Souls beaten with only a crossbow, proving once and for all that the entire Souls series can be beaten without any form of stat scaling. It's weird. I wouldn't have thought that the second weapon type that I played through the entire series with would be a crossbow of all things. But life is strange like that sometimes. Thank you for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic holiday season and that all is well on your end. Make sure to treat yourself with the respect that you deserve. And remember, it always seems impossible until it is done. Take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I'll see you all again soon.